It's so painful watching Susie go from this vivacious, gregarious, social, beautiful girl to what she is now. I'm having tremors uh, because I get, you know, trigger. She has gone from this very funny woman to this very depressed person. Susie and I met in a club about 13 years ago. We were immediately drawn to each other. She and I dated on and off for five years. She was a hostess. She was very involved in the entertainment industry. She was an it girl. Susie had her own radio show. She had a tremendous amount of friends. Our relationship in the beginning was great. We had amazing chemistry. It was love at first sight. I remember her. He was talking to some girl and I was just like, wow, that is my type. Like, I just thought he was so handsome. We sort of uh, challenged each other in a really great way. He's really irreverent and clever and funny. I noticed Susie's eating habits had changed when we moved in together. She would literally cook up an entire pan of meat and eat it all throughout the day. She would leave the house and have hot dogs in her purse. Every five or 10 minutes, she would have to eat. She was extremely possessive over her food, and if I ate it, she would get very upset. I could see the panic in her eyes. A few years ago, Susie was sitting on the couch, and she started going into a convulsion, and her eyes rolled back into her head. This convulsion went for so long, I literally thought she was dying. I, of course, said, we, got, we have to go to the ER, and she refused to go to the ER. It was terrifying to watch her go through that. She's put on a lot of weight, 40 or 50 pounds. Her self-esteem is completely annihilated. It's really heartbreaking to think of Susie as this reclusive, sick person. It's really hard with this illness because people just think I'm like weird and being demanding and being neurotic. She has very few close friends now. Hope is only lost when you're like, I'm done. I'm not getting out of bed. I'm not leaving the apartment. It's completely a wrap. Like, you're not there. No, I can't be there. You can't be there. You still feel like I seem like myself. You're still Susie. I fear that she will continue to lose hope and she will get more miserable as time goes on. <sighs> Thanks for being here, really. Of and I know Susie appreciates it as well. Very much. And you had no idea what she was dealing with when you first moved in. No, I had no idea what she was dealing with. I knew from what she had sort of she had explained a little bit and some other people had explained a little bit, but I was so wrapped up in my own problems at the time, which is originally why I went there. Susie's always been there for me. I've struggled in and out of rehabs and, and to get sober, and Susie was one of the very few people that stuck by me through all of that. Mm -hmm. And then I quickly realized, like, this is, like, what, what is going on with her? What was it that caused you to say, I, I'm moving out? Because I couldn't put my finger on anything that was going on, I was like, maybe I have to remove myself from the equation, and maybe that's the problem. And you knew her before, the Susie that you see now. Yeah. Do you get the sensation that she's still in there? 100%. She's incredibly funny, incredibly witty. She has an amazing mind. And I remember that party. Um, <laughs> and she is... So that Susie's definitely still in there, which is part of the thing that's kind of so heartbreaking about this, because right. I know it's right there, and she's I know trapped that in there. she's trapped in there, and it's this, mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, maybe we can do something about that.